We bring all our needs to God and all our hopes. We want to share faith and hope with others. After speaking about God, let's uh, time to speak to God. So let's join together in the opening prayer. Open, Open our, our eyes so, so we may clearly see the wonders of your creation. We release our tongues to share the knowledge you impart. Transform our religion so its major focus is no longer on our benefit, but on ministering to others as we have been blessed by you. Uh, one thing we uh, we had a request from our pianist uh, for everybody to sing loud, so that uh, it looked like uh, any mistakes might be uh, covered up. So let's join together in singing uh, "Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee."
when we show mercy, we are able to receive God's mercy. God can turn our waywardness upside down and set us on the path of true community. God opens our minds and hearts to hear and understand those who need our help. Amen. Amen. We come now to a time of uh, joys and concerns. We lift them up to each other as well as to God. Um, shall we... Uh, uh, have, do we have some we'd like to share? I would like to thank everybody for their prayers as I moved to Illinois when my sister-in-law passed. The continual prayers for Mike that he struggled with this. For, uh, for families who have suffered grief and loss, uh, may they be upheld by, the, uh, by God's strength and by the community of faith. Lord, in your mercy. In our and I sent out an email yesterday that George Dennis is in Saint Sever Rehab. I think he's across the hall from uh, Charlene. Yes. So if you visit one, yeah. you can visit both. Thank you. Uh, two for one. A two for one. Uh, George has uh, had surgery uh, a week, a week and a half ago. So uh, he was in, in Temple, but now he's back in Cincinnati. So we, as he recovers, as he does his rehab, to, to get him over again uh, and to be able to, to have clear speech again, uh, we will uh, lift him up. We also lift up Charlene since uh, we can have both prayers reach him because they're so close together. <laughs> Charlene's doing good. She's getting carrying the touch by for, uh, for healing and wholeness. Lord, in your mercy. In your prayers. Well, Jackie had an adventure yesterday. You know, but a slow one. No, I'm, I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm going to live over it. Dee's got an adventure. My goodness. The, uh, yes, uh, it's not, it, it, you find out the advantage of having a, 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 a cabin on the track. Yeah. <laughs> It would have been in a good use yesterday if I'd have had one. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I know we're probably a bunch of honey if anybody wants to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you ought to go get it soon because there won't be any bees soon. So, uh, for, for adventures in, uh, in nature, Lord, in your mercy. In our prayers. I'd like to thank Laura Beth for writing the news to the newspaper. Enjoyed reading it. It was very good. Thank you. So if you want to, if you want to spread any rumors, she's the one to talk to. <laughs> I'll take them. <laughs> it's good that we're uh, involved in that uh, in public service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Let's take a moment and put ourselves in the presence of God. Heavenly Father, we come to say thank you. Thank you for the many blessings you have given to us. Sometimes we focus on that which goes wrong, but we also need to be thankful for that which goes right. We thank you for the opportunity to worship to be in touch with you, to practice uh, being touched by your holiness so that we can see you uh, the rest of the week. Keep us in the practice of prayer. We come to you asking help for those around us who are in need, those who suffer grief, those who suffer uh, illnesses, those who suffer uh, injuries. Uh, Turn them to the community. Let, build them up so that they, got, they can be back with us. Build us up so that we can support them with a lot of insurance. We ask for peace in the world. We know that the world is at war and always seems to be at war. But you are the, the, the Lord of, of the universe, the one who brings, sent the Prince of Peace. 
So we come to ask for peace. We ask for guidance as we move towards an election in which we choose leaders. Uh, may we choose wisely and may they see your will in the choices that they have to make. Be with us as we receive your word so that we can take it and put it and apply it to our lives and go forth with confidence and with compassion. We say all this in Jesus' name as we pray in his, in his words, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, about the Old Testament, the book of Proverbs. The scripture reading this morning is Proverbs chapter 22, verses 1 through 2, 8 through 9, and 22 through 23. And it is printed in your insert. A good repetition, repetition is better than much wealth. High esteem is better than silver and gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord made them both. Those who sow injustice will harvest evil. The rod of their fury will come to an end. Happy are generous people because they give some of their food to the poor. Don't steal from the poor because they are poor. Don't oppress the needy in the gate. The Lord will take up their case and press the life out of those who oppress them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our uh, Psalm is 125. It's also in your bulletin. And the response is the chorus to my hope is built. And it goes like this. so that they don't use their hands to do anything wrong. Lord, do good to people who are good, to the people whose hearts are right. But as far as those people who turn to their own twisted ways, may the Lord march them off with other evildoers. Peace be on Israel.
and prepare me for the to hear the gospel with the film I come for. chapter the 24th verse. I'm, uh, I'm just going to use it through, through verse 30 uh, because I'm not going to be using the second uh, miracle as part of the sermon. So we'll just go 24 through 30. Jesus left that place and went into the region of Tyre. He didn't want anyone to know he had entered the house, but he couldn't hide. In fact, a woman whose young daughter was possessed by an unclean spirit heard about him right away. She came and fell at his feet. The woman was Greek, paraphonician by birth. She begged Jesus to throw the demon out of her daughter. He responded, the children have to be fed first. It isn't right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. But she answered, Lord, even the dogs under the table can't eat the children's bread. Good answer, he said. Go on home. The demon has already left your daughter. When she returned to her house, she found the child laying in the bed and the demon gone. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It may not seem like it, but I think this is an important verse. It changed my mind. There's not too many scriptures that I just read and then study and then say, I, I think I need to have a different perspective. Most of the time, I watch out, the, the Jesus that I knew was rather flat. Uh, it was Jesus who did miracles and Jesus who told stories. Uh, Jesus, who was meek and mild, uh, and other people got angry around him, but Jesus didn't get angry, he didn't get tired, uh, he didn't uh, get frustrated. Uh, he was in control all the time. I guess uh, the Nicene Creed says uh, uh, that Jesus is fully human and fully divine. I miss that first part about being fully human. We have an easy time of making Jesus very divine and powerful and, and knowing, but we miss out on his humanness. Now, the church has that trouble with that too. Uh, the church has always defended his divinity and let go of some of his humanity, so you forget that he was a real human being. Uh, I remember uh, a picture that I saw, a painting I saw, that had a picture of Mary and Joseph in the manger and she was holding out her hand and the baby Jesus was standing up in her palm giving a blessing. That didn't happen. <laughs> we forget that Jesus had to have his diaper changed, that he had to be fed, that he cried, uh, that he had to learn to walk and he learned how to talk. We forget that he's a human being. So the question I have, when did Jesus learn that he was the Son of God? And when did he learn what he was supposed to be doing with his life? I kind of doubt that when he was six years old, he knew that. He was still trying to learn his colors and probably how to write. I doubt if he's, when he was 12 years old, he knew, knew that, although the Bible tells us a story about Jesus talking with the elders in the, in the temple at uh, Jerusalem, but it doesn't say he said something profound and something startling. He just said they were impressed by his knowledge. He grew up steeped in the Jewish tradition. He 
quite knowledgeable, but I don't think he knew the son, he was the son of God. Besides, that would make him a very that make him a very difficult teenager, wouldn't it? <laughs> Somebody says, Jesus, I'm faster than you are. Somebody says, Jesus, I'm bigger than you are. And Jesus said, Well, I'm the son of God. <laughs> would make a very difficult teenage year. Some scholars say that he learned when he was 30, when he became baptized by John the Baptist, when the heaven opened up and the dove came down and announced, this is my son. I think he knew before that. I think he was contemplating that all during those years we don't know. We don't know what's in his mind because the scriptures don't tell us. But I think he knew. But I think he did have to go and figure out what he was going to do because he went for 40 days in the wilderness to sort it out. What does this son of God mean thing mean? What did, how do you live that way? How do we, what do you do about that? And then he came back to be in ministry and mission. What was his conclusion? I think it was that he had a message, a light, a love, a forgiveness of God to offer to people. He had a different perspective on how to worship and how to live with God, how to love God. But he had it for the Jewish people. He was steeped in scripture. He was, his parents lived that tradition, the Jewish faith. He went to worship there. He, uh, uh, it was the thing that he knew. And a mission to all the Jewish nation was big enough. I think he's going to learn something different. He was confronted by a woman who was on a mission for her daughter. No ever get in the way of a mother trying to save her child. She came and plopped down in front of her. Now, Let's, let's do, look at a little bit of the circumstances of which we find her in this story. He's gone over the Sea of Galilee to Tyre, which is a Gentile territory. Did he go there because he was going to open a new Gentile mission? Mark says no, he was trying to hide. He didn't want anybody to know who he was. He didn't plan to do, I think he was there for some r and &R. There were very few Jews in that part of the world. And he said, I can get away with this. But he couldn't. The woman breaks all sorts of taboos, all sorts of boundaries. A, a Gentile woman, a Gentile didn't talk to a, a Jew. A woman didn't talk to a man in public. And certainly nobody came and threw themselves at, at somebody's feet and begged them. But that's what she did. Now we uh, are conditioned by our Sunday school teaching that, that we have a meek and mild, uh, kind Jesus, a compassionate Jesus. And so we're just certain that what he's going to say is, I see your pain, your daughter is going to be healed. But he didn't do that. He surprises us and shocks us. And he says, you don't give the children's food to the dog. That may have been a saying, a true one, but you serve the children first. He was talking about the children of Israel. In other words, he called her a dog. Some people try to make it easier and say, well, he was just testing her faith. Mark doesn't tell us that. If he was telling doing that, I think Mark would have said so. Some people say that he's, it really means puppy. You know, we like cute puppies. No, the word doesn't say that. It's a harsh word. But you know, this is a woman on a mission. She accepts his terms. And she says, but even the dogs get what the children don't want. Israel had indicated to him that they didn't really want what he had to offer. By the rejection, by the opposition, by the anger which he, he his presence created. He knew the children didn't want that food. 
And so why not give it to someone who could use it to the end? Even if they were and not human beings in some people's eyes. Jesus said, why the answer? That's a good idea. He said, maybe my idea of the Jewish people is too small. Maybe God is telling me that it's time to expand my vision to be among the Gentiles as well. They can understand. They have needs. They can understand the presence and power of God. Jesus was in a debate with a woman and he lost. And it's a good thing he did because the Gentiles were included and that includes us. The word of God, love of God, the forgiveness of God came to us as well. It changed my perspective. I think there's still people in the world who don't accept other people, who don't, aren't compassionate towards them, who don't see them as children of God. Maybe we all need to have our perspective expanded. Maybe we all need to lose that debate. See everyone like a child of God and treat them that way. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. As we feel God's presence and hear God's word, we, our faith is made stronger. Let us turn to affirm our faith with number 881 in the back of the hymnal. And please stand so we show the world what we stand for. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the great and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us to be your children. You love us no matter what. You forgive us for that which we have done to cross the line. We give thanks. Part of that thanks is to give part of what you, your gift you've given us for the sake of others, for the sake of the ministry and mission to the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
remind you as we go forth to, uh, that uh, this is a five Sunday month, so we will be in Ben, I mean in Lomita on the fifth Sunday. So uh, y'all get to sleep an hour later uh, on the fifth Sunday. So uh, it also makes it a challenge for Debbie to try to put it on the internet. Yes. Let's do it together and pour through the ages. trust is in one in God who equips us to serve. Amen. Let's sing our blessing. Trust God and follow Jesus. Amen. Amen.